Caro, it was fascinating during the week that the two headlines surrounding Geelong were their current full forward, whether he was going to play or not, and their future full forward in Jeremy Cameron, who uh, just after they got through the prelim against Brisbane essentially made the decision that he was going to be joining Geelong, which was a bombshell, um, as we discussed on, uh, as was discussed on Monday with G for GWS. Oh, it was a shock, and and people close to Jeremy Cameron and close to GWS all were suitably shocked by Jeremy's decision. I mean, obviously it's been dragging on, it's dragged on before. Genuine devastation in the camp. That devastation, you know, this is what happens at footy clubs. You get over the devastation and you try and not get mad but get even and try and get the best you can out of the deal, which is what GWS will do now. But um, Craig's view on Monday night was it's over. Their ear is over. Matthew, I'm not sure if you agree with that. Can they salvage something from the wreckage? No, I spoke about it. You know, I've, I've been part of a club when we lost four key players at 26, 27 years of age and it left a massive hole. I talked to Blumfield, Heffern and Carousella plus Damien Harvey. To lose Cor, Williams and uh, obviously Jeremy Cameron, lost, uh, Ross, it's huge. Isn't well, it, what's a common thread with Hardwick and Blumfield? That linked to Surrey, Cap. Yeah, it did, yeah. And I, the backstory seems to be, Caroline, you could help. Does it link to Surrey, Cap, he and a back-ended contract? And I have been able yeah. to sort that. It, because if that's the case, that... That, that, that's, that's true. That, that's true. But th there's a feeling that he wanted to go to Geelong in the end. Geelong wooed him. They've been wooing him for two years. Does it talk to? I think he Patrick doesn't Danger think. I, we talk about the era. Does it talk to? He doesn't think they can win one in the next few. I've given everything. We. I think it does. Had an opportunity. I think it does. He's made and, that and decision. And I just or, make the point. Did they? pick the right player? Like, were they wrong to throw everything at Stephen Canelio a year ago? I don't, I mean, don't mean to be brutal, but they made him captain. They gave him a massive long-term deal. He got dropped this year. He's had issues this year. But, no, they um, they didn't throw everything at Jeremy Cameron and they well, couldn't have known about COVID. I mean, COVID too. had a big impact, didn't it? Of because course of it did. Because back ended deal. I, I agree with you that it probably had some sort of an impact. But, Eddie, you can't Ross, keep absolutely Ross, everyone. Ross, Ross, well, Ross and Lloyd and, and Caro and, and Sam as well, who follows the, the intricacies of the trades, surely, though, this is the, the plan for GWS when they got those young players in, build them up, get the most out of them, and at 27 years of age, flick them out and be able to get three players in the way they're going to do it and get some salary cap. No, that was, so, no, uh, no, Ed, that was not the plan. Not this one. Not well, Jeremy Cameron. I think, not they, when you're I think a key they plan to maybe have won a couple of premierships by now. Yeah, I, look, well, I, I agree with that. that's the point. We have yeah. seen teams hold on to people for too long, though, haven't they? Yeah, but I think if you could win one and trade them out, I think it's perfect. But they've lost their full back, their key forward, their running back. I'm not, I don't know them intimately, what's underneath, yeah. but they'll get some high-end talent through, through picks, but there's some building to be done. And there's also a boy by the name of Jai Caldwell who's making a decision right now. He's a two-year player and he, he's considering. So that's where we've got to probably discuss whether early picks should get three years uh, and not. And, I've heard, and Lord, Lord, I've, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard that Essendon have actually sold your portrait to pay for him. They're, they're oh, loading is. right up to get <laughs> it. <laughs> the Saints, I think, are in there as well. But I just want to highlight what they've gone through, the GWS Giants and the players they have lost. And it's just not stopping, unfortunately, because you, Jeremy Cameron is added to this list. Trelaw, a super player. Yeah, he may be behind his third club. We'll talk to Ed about that later. Taylor Adams, best and fairest winner. Jack Steele, best and fairest winner. Devin Smith is a best and fairest winner. Tom Boyd, premiership player. Then Hoskin Elliott, Marchbank. And the ins, well, Brett Delidio was at the end of his career. You know, uh, Stevie Johnson, end of his career. So the outs to the ins, it just doesn't stop though, Ross. That's no, it's issue, staggering. Right? And yeah. Collingwood have been a good raider. They've got yeah. three of those six or seven. They're high-end players, Adams yeah. and Trelaw. Just, and... just on who, who we were seeing before the vision, Ross, Brandon Parfitt, whose name today got thrown up as a possible trade, mm. I think his manager came out and said it wouldn't be happening. If you were Chris Scott, oh, I'm sure that you would you know just like to avoid all that going He's into He's lost Tim form. Kelly and he almost resigned over losing Tim Kelly. That's how upset he was. Wow. So Parfitt's been instrumental in their final series. I wouldn't think Parfitt's going anywhere. This whole talk has opened up again the free agency debate and the Chief Gillan McLaughlin had his say on radio today. I don't believe free agency is distorting the competition. We've had free agency a long time and there's not a huge body of evidence that it has. There's very few people, players, that actually go under free agency. When players move, the clubs that they leave generally do OK out of it as well. Yes, unfortunately, though, two of the biggest name forwards in the game's last five years have gone to the two clubs playing off in a grand final this weekend. Ross, 
To me, the biggest issue is the compensation. I mean, it just hurts all the clubs. And so it's like they're half doing free agency at the moment. I've got my issues with it. I mean, the, the argument that if you're a good club with good people, you'll get good players, get better, is fair enough. But some clubs just are struggling so much at the moment, particularly in this time. Well, clubs it's... are using it themselves. Can't they? They, we're a destination club. They know there's a difference. And they know it's winning and dollars and facilities that make the difference. There's, I mean... You like free agency? Lance, not, not with what I'm seeing with Lynch and the key forwards going to grand finals and premiership teams. Well, just on that, though, I think Chris Fagan has changed the environment of Brisbane uh, yep. for the better. And he talks about it. He goes, I'm 80% environment, probably 20% tactical. And I think it's turned things around. I think some, this jumped out at me at a Sam Simpson article. He's going to play his 14th game in a premiership. Stephen Wells has been wonderful. Oh, premiership, long. is he? What's that? No, sorry, in his 14th game in a potential... <laughs> uh, oh, in grand final, anyway. Oh, she's carried didn't miss that one. Stephen Wells. <laughs> he, they, Geelong... Sorry, Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne wanted to put him on a list. Wells said, we want to rookie you. They said, we can go straight on a list, so. And Stephen Wells said, we will rookie you, so we'll develop you at your own pace and stay in the system longer. And his father, who was also a Geelong player, said how true they were to their word and how they've nurtured him. And then he's rehabbed his hamstring this year with Joel Salward... And they said, Sam has learned so much, it's been a life-changing experience. So just talk about environment and culture. And that's why I reckon Jeremy Cameron has gone to Geelong, because he wants to be part of something like that. I, w I want to move on. Yeah. A very good point you make. Um, I want to move on, though, to the Collingwood Football Club. And, Ed, I'll come to you in a minute, but this is difficult for you because... There is a, it, there's a difficult summer, I reckon, facing Collingwood. They, they missed out on Jeremy Cameron. I think they did present Sam. Of course, we've got Jordan Degoe asking for a lot of money and facing an indecent assault charge that could come to fruition over the summer. The Dane Beans deal has not been done. He's clearly not going to play again. I'm hearing perhaps there could be... Maybe Dane wants more of a settlement than Collingwood is prepared to give him. It's a two-year deal. Then you've got Adam Trelaw, contracted till 2025. And, of course, Heredia Lamumba just won't go away and this internal investigation and potentially a court case. I'm, I'm not sure where that is at the moment. I'll come to you, Ed, in a sec. But, Matthew, where do you see that heading? Uh, oh, well, it's tough because, you know, they've got a lot of quality players at Collingwood and it's you know, when you're paying for a player who's not even there, not even participating for whatever reason, and you potentially lose a guy like Adam Trelaw who, to me, he is black and white. He loves Collingwood Football Club mm. and a player could possibly be spat out of Collingwood, potentially when you've got a player who hasn't been there all year and you invested him. That's where it yeah, hurts me probably to see Trelaw if he has to leave the club when Dane hasn't played the whole year. And, Ed, where do, can you tell us anything about the Beams deal and where that's going? Clearly he won't play again. Uh, no, he's not going to play again, we know that. But, uh, no, I'm not at liberty to, to talk about any of those issues at the moment. Safe to say that it's well on hand. And, Ed, can, we, can you tell us when you were informed as a club that Jeremy Cameron had not selected Collingwood? Well, to, I mean, look, again, I'm not going to get into the intricacies of these things. I mean, I, I've, read, I've read three times in a paper in the last week that Josh Kennedy was coming to Collingwood from West Coast. I know that didn't happen. That, that wasn't going. a question, There's a though. lot of things that go on, so... <laughs> No, well, the, the, the answer is I don't think Colin was, was uh, very much into Jeremy Cameron either, but uh, we'll, we'll see in uh, the fullness of time. He was always going to Geelong, just as Tom Lynch was always going to Richmond, I would have thought. I don't think there's any, uh, any misconception in any of that.